people are not going to be there on time, especially on a Sunday. But nevertheless, I think we'll start. I think the key important thing people have been realizing is we are all in India, most of the people are used to doing interventions and echocardiogram has been a appendage or a vestigious um, organ that nobody pays attention only for EF, if at all, or if there is a regional wall motion abnormality. And now of late with the TAVI, they want to look at the aortic valve a little bit, little bit carefully. But, but now with the structural intervention of mitral valve and tricuspid valve and other things, people are paying a little bit more attention and more interest has been given to the imaging. And I hope eventually in 10 years from now, there'll be a lot more non-invasive cardiologists who spend their career in development because it's not a art that you can pick up just by doing one day cath, other day imaging, other day. No, you have to, you have to give your, totally devote your time. But now, I think regarding the tricuspid uh, transcatheter edge to edge repair of the mitral valve, the key important thing is since it's going to involve the mitral valve, you need to know the mitral valve anatomy me thoroughly. I think you should never be able to have any question regarding this. So this is anatomical picture. If you counterclockwise rotate it by about 30 to 40 degrees, then it'll look like the way the surgeon is going to be looking at. This is when the patient is lying on his back. When we do the echo imaging on left lateral, it's going to be similar to this. But whereas when the surgeon looks at it, it's not exactly the same, it's a little bit turned. So if you look at it here, the most important thing, what you're going to be seeing here is, mitral valve is not a circular structure. That's number one you have to keep in mind. Second, mitral valve annulus is not uniform. That's number two you have to keep in mind. Number three is iotomitral portion, which is called as a mure septal leaflet. That area is almost flat, or it may be even concave, turning other way, because the commissions are going to be coming like that. So people have to keep those things in mind in a normal person when you're looking at it. Then, for easy purpose, we are divided into an anterior leaflet and posterior leaflet. But generally speaking, it is not that easy. But for our practical purposes, you can see, this is an if, if you look at the leaflet, when you open it up, the leaflet, the anterior leaflet, the posterior leaflet, they're not really separated. At the commissural area, there's a small leaflet which I've seen. There are commissural scallops they see. Sometimes this area, this, the commissural area, the scallops may not be as well formed. Sometimes they can be very well formed also. And look at the caudal structures, the primary cardiac coming to the leaflet tips, the secondary cardiac attached to the body and the tip of the cooperation zone where it joins. And in the case of posterior leaflet, it also has cardiac going to the left ventricular myocardium. So these are complex structures. And if you look at them, they're not going to be like the same in every patient. It's like your palm of your finger. The fingerprint is going to be different. So some of them, they have a bunch of several cords, tertiary cords here. Some of them have a large one or two cords. So it's going to be quite variable. So when you are looking at a patient with a mitral regurgitation, you have to look at it with the idea, where is the primary problem? Does it involve the portion, which segment? Called A1, A2, or A3, or P1, or P2, P3. Once you identify the segment that is involved, then you need to look at the edge of the leaflet. Is the edge of the leaflet normal? or is it curled, and how, how are the cordates are placed there? Because that's what, it's not like a surgeon. Surgeon is very easy. All he, all he has to do is cut, and he's going to either, if the tissue is large, he's going to cut it out, and cinch it. Cinch it. The tissue is small, he can, he's going to put an extra cord, depending upon what it is, and he's also going to modify the annulus so that the cooperation will be fine. But for you, you don't have that luxury. All you have is two flimsy arms, some of them are larger, some of them are thinner, and they're not going to hold on to tightly. So you need to look at how much the tissue is going to be, and what, how long it's going to be, and the bulk of the disease, what is happening. So those things, you have to look at it in a multiple different views. And if you need, you also need to use transcendental echocardiography. 
Here is a patient. You see that this is LV, LA, RV, RA, mitral valve. So it's a A2, P2. It's nicely seen, P2 leaflet, long enough, and there's a ruptured cord, and it's a prolapse. But even here, when you look at it, the part of the P2, which is two-thirds of the coaptation site, is prolapsing and flail, whereas the base of the part, a little bit of a base, and that part, portion that is adjoining the annulus, that is thick. So it is a diseased valve going on for a long time. And if you look at the MR, MR is also coming from the cooptation site. So this is the site of the pathology. And you look at the, this is not the same patient, of course. So this is similar to this. You see the posterior leaflet prolapse. But look at the disease of the leaflet. So what we don't understand is that the chronicity of the disease causes adverse remodeling of the leaflet. Leaflet can lengthen, and surgeons can see it more, more often when you send them, the tissue is going to be quite bulky, and also it occupies a larger area, so they can resect it. So this is adverse remodeling. You need to look at that. But if you look at here, 3D, this is a surface 3D. Look at nicely. It, ab it is able to demonstrate the panoramic view, all the leaflet, all the segments at the same time. You can see the ruptured cord coming here, here and there. And this is a solid, isolated P2, which is diseased but larger surface area, and here, looking at it, the leaflet tip is fine, there's no calcium, and the cooptation length and width, all of them you're going to pay. So that clearly points out that here, if you could put easily one clip, which should be large enough to hold it, or two small clips, if you're going to put it, it'll be good. Because depending upon the length of the tissue, what you have, depending upon the thickness of it, you have to decide about your device also. So this is an easy one. This is what, you, what it will give you is, this will fit into the green zone. Anybody who's starting off, this is a case you should have where you can easily try and do it. And TEE adds more to it, a little bit more, in that it also shows you the commissures better. It also shows you the, the slits or the, the folds in between. Sometimes the folds can mimic like a cleft, but one has to be careful enough to look at. So this is another patient. Look at here. Even though it is flailing, there's a little bit of a ruptured cord, but most of the leaflet is funny. So this area is a degeneration, fibrocystic degeneration, and analyst is also a little bit of a fibrous calcium. And when you do a TEE, here you see this is a flail segment, and there's also this cleft-like thing, what you're seeing is a normal one. When the disease has occurred, that area as it collapsing, it tears up, and we see the artificial or acquired clefts, which is re resulting from the tear we see. And there's also, what we didn't see here, this leaflet is collapsing also, and here there's a small ruptured cord for that also. So TE gives you more information, even here, this also fits into the area where you can do it, because this one area which is large, when you put a clip and bring the two things together, this bulky tissue will become flat. So the other area will be covered. So that will be the easiest way. And this is a, another one where the pathology is related to the anterior leaflet. And if you look at it here, so it's an isolated, large anterior segment and flail, and posterior leaflet is essentially normal. Posterior leaflet length is fine. So in order to grab this, you need to have a sufficient amount of tissue. So here is also, even though it's anterior leaflet, is easy to do. So beginners probably should do start with the with the posterior leaflet, like what the surgeons did in the earlier. Then you can do this also. This is also easy one fits into the green zone. Whereas here, this another pit looks like easily, looks like a P2 flail, but this is a mix, degenerative valve, fibrocystic degeneration. But in this view, when you look at it, it is this bizarre because the valve is thicker, but at the same time, the adjoining P2 and P3 area is not normal. When you put a color, the white jet that's going and going into multiple different views. So here, you have to be careful. Am I dealing with the disease? Say here, the 3D adds more. Look at here. So you also have a 
severe prolapse and flail of P2, and there's P3, which is going to be a commercial scallop here. This is part of the P3, or is then part of P2, which is separated out. So this is a complex pathology, what we see, but this also can be done by the experienced hands because you need to put one clip here, one clip here, as long as it involves the center area where you're seeing sufficient amount of tissue is there, sufficient amount of leaflet on the other side of grass, you can do that. So here, it requires deep clips and give a good tissue bridge. But look, look, at, the, look at the area, it has become a little smaller. So one of the essential things, what you also have to keep in mind is the essential mean gradient initially when you get it and, and the deceleration slope. Mean gradient may be two, but the deceleration may be around 300. They have to be in the back of your mind. When you close it, you're going to develop mitral stenosis. So one has to keep in, in, in the back of your mind all those things. And majority of those cases are going to be with the small annulus. And here, this fits into a red zone. You really can't do it. This is like a Barlow's valve. I'm not quite sure how many scallops are there. So this is the anterior leaflet. This is the posterior leaflet. This is the anterior commissural scallop, the posterior commissural scallop. And the P2 itself has got its own two leaflets. So this patient, if you're going to, even most of the surgeons, I don't think that they can do it. When they try to do a repair, the repair is not going to be very good in this kind. I think the ideal thing will be in a, a valve replacement. So, but people have attempted to do repair and they have done repairs, which is not satisfactory result. And here is another one. When you're doing a transthoracic echo, you see the mitral valve, which is quite redundant, anterior leaflet. So look at what I said about the cordae. Look at all the primary cordae are quite a bunch of cordae and secondary joining together on both leaflets. And when you do a short axis, it looks bizarre. You see P3, you see P1, you see anterior leaflet, posterior leaflet P2, you're not able to bring it up. It should raise a question for you whether it, it has got a cleft. And here, when you do a typical four chamber, chamber, that A2 portion is quite large and P2 is a little small. And here, the two chamber view, it looks like P3 is prolapsing, but you don't see the other one. But when you put the color, there's a, two large jets, one going across, the other one is coming across. This is a complex morphology. And when you look at it here, 3D, nicely as ventricular aspect, when you look at it, there's a large cleft of the posterior mitral leaflet. So here, it looks like almost like a tri-leaflet. If there was a papillary muscle and cardiac going there, I would have called it a tri-leaflet. So this is a large cleft, and these tissues are redundant and basically degenerative. If you want to put a clip here, clip here, you can do it in, in, a, in a patient who is highly symptomatic and high surgical risk where you can't do it, and a very, very experienced hand, they can get it done. But not by a novice, not by, but surgeon, if the patient is, a, is the ideal candidate for surgery, I think probably surgeon can do this. They can close it and put a ring and reduce the size. I think there's so many things they can do. I mean, the images can recognize, there's so many options are there with the current modern imaging modality where you can sort it out. The same thing, which I couldn't see very well with the other one, with the new technique, you can see that the cleft very nicely in the, in the, in the involving the posterior leaflet. Now, most of the patients in India, they come, they don't have a history and they might have had some surgery in the past. Now they're presenting at the age of 70 with the shortness of breath and with heart failure. Here is the classic, severe MR, anterior leaflet is short and thickened, posterior leaflet is fine. If you look at short axis, there's a cleft. So you need to think that this patient must have had congenital surgery like ASD or something like that closed, like this, osteum primum ASD with the cleft mitral valve. But in this patient, we did the surgical repair. This is a before, and this is after. You can see nicely. Surgeon can easily, we can't do that. We can't maintain the similar geometry with the, with the, with the clip. Well, one of the other area where you have to also pay attention is, this is a patient, what, 83 years old, shortness of breath, significant MR. You can see here, 
mitral annulus is calcified, mitral valve is thickened, anterior leaflet is also thickened, long-standing hypertension. And here, if you see it, posterior leaflet is thickened, anterior leaflet is also thickened. It opens, but this doesn't open that well. And the MR is severe. And here, when you, op when you see it, the opening, posterior leaflet is totally ankylosed, doesn't move. Anterior leaflet moves, severe MR. In this patient, the gradient is 2. Well, look at the deceleration time. Then when they try to attempt for, for her sake, so here's the TEE and see the MR here, MR. And this is the annular calcium. Here the valve area appeared to be pretty good. It's about, it came up to, many, many numbers came, 3.9 to 4.5. So they attempted to close it. The annulus is like a rigid ring completely all around. So that is not compliable, not by giving in. So once they put the clip to see, a gradient went up to 12. Then they have to t take away the clip. So look at the pressure half time. So I think that is for the degenerative mitral valve disease. In functional MR, same way, A2, P2, the most important thing what you have to look at is the length of the P2 that you cooperation height, cooperation height, will you be able to pull it back, and how is the annulus? Sometimes the annulus is also dilated, then you can't pull them back. So you got to keep that in mind. And here is the TE again, clearly shows. Commissioner, post commissioner, this is the area. And this piece tissue is large enough, and this length is large enough, so you'll be able to pull it and put a clip. This is a straightforward, easy to do. Uh, Dr. Chandra, can you conclude, as we have to go for a live case, it seems like. I'm done. So this is another functional MR. I mean, uh, with, with, it looks like functional MR initially, but on the other hand, it's not. It's, it's a flail tissue and also functional combination pathology. In this kind of pathology, you really can't use. It's also not a zone that you can use it. But anyway, I think the, to close off, when you look at the valve, you have to look at one, what segment is involved. Number two, whether the calcification is present, how extent it is. Does it involve the grasping zone? Third, mitral valve annulus, as well as mitral valve area and mean gradient is important. And flail gap and all are not necessary nowadays because the many clips of different sizes are there and the experience has been improved. People can grasp anything they want now. Thank you.